Okay, we're going on on the subject of prayer. This is Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversations with God, Book One, Teaching Eleven. And I've got a pen around here somewhere. Can't find it. There we go. Totally unprofessional all of this. But such is life. I think this book is totally unprofessional. Okay. Now we're on the subject of prayer. This is an exciting subject for Christians at least um, and people who are spiritual. Neil says, yet so many people say that prayers have got their prayers have gone unanswered. Neil Scott says, no prayer and a prayer is nothing more than a fervent statement of what is so goes unanswered. Every prayer, every thought, every statement, every feeling is creative. To the degree that it is fervently held as truth, to that degree it will be made manifest in your experience. When it is said that a prayer has not been answered, what is in actuality happened, has happened is that the most fervently held thought, word or feeling has become operative. Yet what you must know, and here is the secret, is and why would God have a secret? is that always it is the thought behind the thought, what might be called the sponsoring thought, that was the controlling the thought. If therefore you beg and supplicate, there seems a much smaller chance that you will experience what you think you are choosing because the sponsoring thought behind every supplication is that you do not have now what you wish. That sponsoring thought becomes your reality. The only sponsoring thought which could override this thought is the thought held in faith that God will grant whatever is asked without fail. Some people have such faith, but very few. The process of prayer becomes much easier when, rather than having to believe that God will always say yes to the request, one understands intuitively that the request is not necessary. Then the prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving, it is not a request at all but a statement of gratitude for what is so. Now, let me tell you folks, there is no peace in the world. Okay? The world in many countries is at war. There's skirmishes, famine, disease, 40,000 people die of unsafe drinking water, disease from unsafe drinking water every day. 20,000 people in the world die of starvation. Many more die of preventable diseases. Many more are dying out of, out of war and AIDS. Many are dying through abortions. Stop it, God. Stop all of it. I say in faith, within the next week, stop all of that. If I really believed that could happen, Neil Donald Walsh's God is saying it will happen. But he's going further. He's saying, I shouldn't be eating, okay? I'm a bit hungry. He's saying, all I need to do is thank God for that happening and believe it. And I don't even have to ask for it. Let me tell you folks, there's going to be no peace on earth in every nation till Jesus rules on earth. No matter how positive people are, no, ma no matter how many people pray, while ever the United States government and other governments make massive amount of money out of war, and corporations and people's super, superannuation and investments and multinational company share prices, while people are interested in money at least, wars are not going to cease. While ever the American government can lend money to war-torn nations to buy weapons that they sell, war's not going to stop. Now, is that my sponsoring thought? He's, God says, yes, that is my sponsoring thought. The Bible says that that's true. 
in Jeremiah 17 verse 9 it says the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things who can understand it that's a statement of truth according to Neil Donald Walsh's God that's not a statement of truth and can't be trusted because it's just simply words on the page do you think you can manipulate God just by saying thank you What would be the need of the Lord's Prayer? Give us today our daily bread, as we forgive others who trespass against us. Why would you even thank God? Give us today our daily bread. Why would you even ask for your daily bread? If asking was not necessary and only thanking would. Wouldn't Jesus of all people pray the model prayer? And why did he ask for something? Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Why did he ask for things? Why did he teach his disciples to ask for things? Why did they make statements of lack in the model prayer? And Jesus, wouldn't he be connected to the real God, being the Son of God? Wouldn't he know how to pray? Why does he pray opposite to what Neil God, Donald Walsh's God says to pray? Why does he pray from a statement of lack? You've got to ask yourself, who is this Neil Donald Walsh's God? Who is this mighty God? Who's speaking here? You gotta ask yourself, what are you doing? Are you asking by faith for God to provide a need or a thing that you want? And you ask him because you lack it and you want it. That's a prayer of faith. That's a statement of faith. You know many things I get, just looking at the time. Many things I get in life, I get without asking God. I have a thought that I want something to happen and it happens. It's as though God hears my thought and answers my prayer. That isn't even a prayer I get. So I can recognize how Neil's God skirts with the tr truth. If I think I'm always gonna lack, well, I always will lack. Even if I was given a million dollars, I could spend a million dollars and still be in lack. There's a certain truth in what he says, but there's certain lies. And that's why it's so crafty. That's why it comes from a source, not God the Father. I think I've quoted a number of scriptures in the last couple of teachings that differ to what Neil Donald Walsh's God is saying here. Where do you sit? Why does David all through the Psalms beseech God to do things and act on his behalf and help him? Why is David the great psalmist, the great guy who wrote many of the lyrics of songs that we use in contemporary uh, songwriters and contemporary gospel writers, songwriters use his penned words in his psalms to compose songs. What is that book of psalms so full of David beseeching and pleading with the Lord for the Lord to step in and change his life? Hey? Why does the great David set such a bad example according to Neil Donald Walsh's God? Is Neil Donald Walsh's God wrong? I believe he is. Does that mean he's the God of the universe? I doubt it. I think it's a demon talking. Very crafty demon. I pray this has blessed you.